When we think about the Olympics, we think about strength, dedication, sacrifice, and the almost superhuman feats performed by the best athletes in the world. Since the start of the modern Olympics in 1896, Olympians have constantly broken records and written history. Today, we're going to be talking about best boxing moments from the Olympics you need to see. Olympic boxing has introduced some of the most legendary names ever to grace the sport. The Games is the ultimate prize for every amateur boxer boxer and the perfect way to sign off before heading into the professional ranks. Over the years, dazzling performances, shock decisions, and even history-making bouts have lit up the Olympics. Before we get into the video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with the notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Boxing at the Olympics has had its share of historical moments, controversies, and shocking events. Let's take a look at some of the best boxing moments in Olympic history. First on the list is Cassius Clay, Rome, 1960. The man is known as Muhammad Ali almost decided not to make the games in Italy due to a fear of flying and even strapped on a parachute on the plane. But the greatest must have been thankful that he did make the trip as he went on to win the gold, beating Pole Zbigniew Pichkowski in the final. Ali traveled to the 1960 Rome Games to compete in the light heavyweight division. Despite being only 18, he won all four of his fights easily. Little did anyone know, it would spark one of the most iconic careers ever, not only in boxing sport, but also in all sports. Clay turned professional and won the heavyweight world championship for the first time in 1964, beating Sonny Liston in a legendary fight. Over the next four years, he defended his title nine times, converted to Islam, and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Then we have Sugar Ray Leonard, Montreal 1976. Leonard goes down as one of the most technically gifted fighters of all time, blessed with speed, timing, and magical footwork. It was all on display in Canada, where he showed off his famous shoe shine technique of throwing a lot of fast combinations to catch the judge's eye. Leonard beat Cuba's Andreas Aldama for gold and in the pros later became a five-weight world champion as part of the Four Kings era, with classic fights against Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, and the late Marvin Hagler. Leonard now keeps his gold medal locked up tightly in a safety deposit box, but he says he's allowed it to grace other people's necks on rare occasions. When some friends or just individuals come over, sometimes I'll show it. Let them take a picture of it around their neck. Here you go, you get one around your neck. The former athlete told People. Next is Roy Jones Jr., Seoul, 1988. In one of boxing's darkest and most infamous hours, Jones was robbed of Olympic gold against Park Si Hung of South Korea. Years later, it emerged the offending judges had been wined and dined by Korean organizers. Still, the International Olympic Committee stated there is no evidence of corruption in the boxing events in Seoul. The outcome drew instant criticism and disdain even from Seoul South Koreans, who heckled Park at the podium and bombarded local TV stations with phone calls protesting that the country's home advantage had gone too far. Jones went on to have a phenomenal professional career, becoming a four-way champ in the pros and even winning a heavyweight belt, and retiring in 2018 with a 66-9 record that cemented him as one of the sport's all-time greats. Park, the last South Korean boxer to win Olympic gold, said he had spent the past 32 years wishing it was silver. There's hardened resentment built up in me that I will probably carry for the rest of my life. Park, 54, who now coaches the small municipal boxing team of Seowigpo City in the island province of Jeju said, I didn't want my hand to be raised after the fight with Jones, but it did go up, and my life became gloomy because of that. Then we also have Lennox Lewis, Seoul 1988. Lewis, who was born in London, moved to Ontario at age 12, represented Canada in Korea. At 18, he represented Canada in the 1984 Summer Olympics as a super heavyweight but lost by decision in the quarterfinals to American Tyrell Biggs, the eventual gold medalist. Lewis, being a true competitor, decided that he would return to the Olympic Games and win gold. In 1988, at the Seoul Olympics, he did as he said he would and brought the gold medal to Canada in the super heavyweight division. This set the stage for Lewis's illustrious boxing career. It was American heavyweight Riddick Bowie that he beat to win gold, sparking a heated rivalry with the heavyweight. It carried on into the pros, but they never rematched, with Bowie winning his WBC belt to avoid fighting Lewis. Floyd Mayweather, Atlanta, 1996 
Mayweather lost to Bulgarian Serafim Todorov in the semifinals in another ugly fight for boxing, but had been robbed, so much that the referee even raised his wrong hand in confusion as Todorov was announced the winner. Mayweather reached the semifinals following a tight contest against future Olympic silver medalist Lorenzo Arango of Cuba. Standing between him and a place for the gold medal bout was three-time world champion Todorov. Mayweather seemed the dominant fighter of the two as he kept landing shots while avoiding ones thrown towards him. The referee raised his hand, and it looked like the United States could add another gold to their medal tally. This is where drama struck. The judges announced Todorov as the winner, with the score reading 10-9, much to the shock of the American team. Mayweather was inconsolable after the fight and left the interview in tears, despite the heartbreak of winning only bronze. It was the last time Mayweather, who retired 50-0 after turning pro, ever tasted defeat. Next up is Vladimir Klitschko, Atlanta 1996. The younger Klitschko won gold against Tonegan Paya Wolfgram in America. It was not such an easy transformation into the paid ranks for the Ukrainian though, who suffered three defeats in his early career. Under the guidance of legendary trainer Emmanuel Stewart, Klitschko went on to have a dominant nine-year reign as champ before losing to Tyson Fury in 2015. Also, we have Deontay Wilder, Beijing 2008. American Wilder, then 22, was beaten by Italian ex-cop Clemente Russo in the semi-final in China to claim bronze, but it was the third-place prize that inspired his current nickname, the Bronze Bomber. Paying homage to the Bronze Bomber Joe Lewis from also Wilder's home state of Alabama, the nickname has become synonymous with modern-day heavyweight boxing. Next is Anthony Joshua, AJ London, 2012. Despite being a world silver medalist, Joshua went into the 2012 London Olympics as a novice in the international scene. Only four years after taking up boxing, Joshua beat Italian legend and reigning Olympic champion and former two-time world championship Roberto Camarel in front of adoring fans in the capital. Joshua grew into the fight after conceding the first two rounds to Camarel, an adversary he had already beaten the previous year. He fought back to level the scores after the third round before announcing the winner via count back. It was the night Britain's newest superstar was born, and within a year of AJ's pro debut, he was a household name. Fast forward to the present, he is one of the biggest poster boys in boxing, a two-time unified champ and a mega commercial attraction. Also, we have Nicola Adams, London, 2012. The 2012 Games was a landmark for boxing, and it was the first to involve women's competition. It was Britain's Adams who was the first to medal, brilliantly beating the world's number one Ren Kan Kan from China to win gold. She added a further flyweight gold at the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and was victorious at the 2015 European Games in Baku. The following year was just as successful. Leeds Bourne's Adam won her first world championship gold before defending her flyweight title at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and turning professional in 2017. Adams followed it up with a pro world title and retired in 2019 unbeaten in six fights. Next is Evander Holyfield, 1990. A legendary 1984 U.S. team member, Evander Holyfield, won a bronze at light heavyweight at the Games in Los Angeles. Holyfield turned pro right after the Olympics and captured the WBA cruiserweight title from Dwight Muhammad Kwai. In just his 12th fight, Holyfield would go on to become the undisputed cruiserweight champion. Holyfield is the greatest cruiserweight ever to live, and his war with Kwai is the greatest fight in the division's history. Holyfield captured the undisputed heavyweight crown from Buster Douglas in October 1990. He is the only man to win versions of the heavyweight title four times. Also, we have Lennox Lewis, 1988. Lennox Lewis won a gold medal for Canada at the 1988 Games, knocking out Riddick Bowie in the finals. It should have been the opening volley in a classic heavyweight rivalry that would carry on to the professional ranks. Alas, it never came to pass. The decade of the 1990s was the greatest in heavyweight history, aside from the 1970s. But those of us who were alive then will always remember how much better it might have been if Bowie had been willing to fight Lewis. As it ended up, Lewis would have to rate as being the best big man of that golden era. The so-called sport of kings has a proud Olympic history and can chart its involvement back to the ancient games in 688 BC. Many giants of the sport began their careers as amateurs in the Olympic ring, and well, the rest is history. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do well to like and subscribe to my channel, and then click on the bell icon to get new video updates.